This is Mark Bell from Supertraining.tv, Supertraining Gym, the strongest gym in the West, answering more questions today for the Power Project. The question of the day comes from DJ Powerlifter off the YouTubes. Everybody out there, don't forget, it's called the YouTubes. And class, we are on page 43. Today's message is brought to you by HowMuchYourBench.net, The Slingshot, and the only strength magazine in the world, ThePowerMagazine.com. So the question from DJ Powerlifter is about elbow flare, not about Ric Flair, woo, but about flare and about elbow flare. The very common problem that you see amongst lifters, and uh, there's some solutions to it, um, but one of the main things, it's kind of like the baby giraffe legs with the knees coming in and the squat, um, <clears throat> some other things that, that you see occur. Uh, some default positions people go to when they go to do a deadlift. Their hips shoot up uh, before the weights come off the ground. These kinds of things are very common, and they are very hard to fight. And all you ever hear everyone tell you is, you need to get tight, you need to get yourself tighter, or you need to tuck your elbows in. And I'm here to tell you, as I always do with my knowledge bombs, here to speak the truth and to tell you that this is going to take some time. Especially if you're way out, if your elbows flare way out. I've dealt with many athletes who've had that issue, and it is not easy to overcome. So we have a little bit of a battle here. And you'll hear people say things like, use your lats. Well, it's a bench press. How the hell do I use my lats? If you don't have lats, if you aren't jacked, if you aren't tan, it's going to be hard to use your lats. So let's start off with some basic mechanics of the bench press. We want to bring the weight not out to here, not up to the throat level. We want to bring the weight out to about here, over the pecs. Um, if you want to bring it lower, that's acceptable as well. You can bring it a little bit lower. So we're going to take the weight out of the rack. Before we do that, I'm sorry, I'm speaking a little ahead of myself. We're going to squeeze the bar as hard as we can. When you squeeze the bar as hard as you can, your body works upstream and downstream. And when you squeeze the bar as hard as you can, your hand flexes, your wrist flexes, your forearms flex, your biceps flex, and everything right into your shoulder flexes. Like that. And you got to make that noise too. So on the way down, we're going to pretend to bend the bar. We're going to pretend to kind of squeeze the bar and turn it that way a little bit, like that. Like a titty twister times a thousand. Everybody knows what those are. And so from there, again, we're gonna take that weight out, not to here, and if you are taking the weights out to there, work on it, work on taking them out lower. Trust me, it will pay off in the long run. So squeeze that barbell, take the weight out to where it needs to be taken out to, a little bit lower than probably what you're used to. And you're gonna to start to lower the weight and you want to just bring your elbows in naturally. You hear people talk about tucking all the time, but you got to realize there's dudes out there, there's girls out there, there's guys out there uh, with strangly, strangly bodies and sinewy limbs. And uh, you have to be careful what you tell these people because their bodies move a lot differently than a strong ass power lifter. Their body's going to move quite differently. Even if they have built up some strength, they are going to move differently and their elbows are going to move around and what's going to happen is if you tell them to tuck many times they are in the gay pterodactyl position and <clears throat> what happens when you're in the gay pterodactyl position is gay wrist and even worse what happens in the bottom of the gay pterodactyl gay wrist position you make the gay pterodactyl noise and you say dang it <laughs> and so you want to try to avoid that you want to avoid being externally rotated. I can't even really do it. I don't have any external rotation in my shoulder. Um, I don't have any internal rotation either. So I'm kind of jacked up as far as some of that goes. But in some ways, it's good. In some ways, for me, it's beneficial. Helps me stay tight. But you, so again, you want to squeeze the bar as hard as you can. You want to try to you want to try to bend the bar on the way down. We're going to bring the weight down. We're not going to here. There's not trying to stick the belly out. For some of you guys out there that have a belly, maybe you do want to take advantage of it. Maybe you're a shorter athlete. Maybe you can touch your stomach. But for most people, you're going to touch right about here. Another thing, 
a lot of people talk about you know trying to use your lats and trying to use your triceps and trying to take the shoulders and the chest out of the movement. To me, that's a little bit absurd. You actually want your chest in the movement and you want to bring your elbows back a little bit so you get a little bit of a stretch through the pecs because you want to try to take advantage of utilizing them. Uh, Eric Spoto is a great example. Watch Scott Mendelson's best bench press of all time. These are guys that handle over 700 pounds raw. Um, Stan Efferding, 606 bench press, is a great example. Actually, Stan Efferding, when I first started teaching him, he would bench with his elbows way up here. And he was benching way up in here. A couple weeks before the meet, he missed a 585 bench. Uh, and I said, you know, it's going to be very difficult for you to bench the weight that you want to bench, which was 600, um, with the current form that you have. We have to make some changes. Even though you're a savage Stan Efferding, we got some changes to make. And so we made those changes. I may not know how to bench 600 pounds raw because I've never ever done it before, but I know about getting stronger. I know how to help people improve. So I'm able to work with a guy like Stan Efferding and teach him some of these cues that can be valuable for everybody, whether you're a 5'10 girl that weighs 170 pounds or whether you're a 5'2 guy that weighs 250 pounds. doesn't matter. Uh, all, a lot of these rules will still apply. So what we did with Stan is just what I said. He tucked the elbows in a little bit on the way up from the lift. He, on the way down from the lift, he would tuck the elbows in hard, and he would try to get that tricep in on that lat. Remember, Stan Efferding is a, a, pro, a pro bodybuilder, so he's jacked as a mofo, so he can take that tricep and dump it onto his lat when he tucks inward. Now, when he came back upward, he was going to spread the bar apart and actually forcefully flare the elbow out, but not allow the shoulders to take over too much. That is the key element right there. It's okay to flare the, flare the elbows out a little bit. You actually want to. You actually want to get a little bit of travel uh, with that barbell if you're built like a normal person. If you're built like a stumpy power lifter, it might be different for you. The barbell might move in an exact straight path. So there are some of the mechanics that you're going to need to know. Now, as far as exercises go, you're going to need to do things like five sets of five, three sets of three, three sets of ten, and you're going to have to do it with precision, and you're going to have to do it with good form, the form that I just mentioned. Don't let those elbows come out. Don't let those shoulders take over. Uh, engage in some dumbbell pressing, not some dumbbell pressing, a lot of dumbbell pressing, two times per week. Flat bench one, one time, incline the next. <clears throat> um, I'm sorry, do two sets of flat and two sets of incline uh, twice a week. One day a week, go light and do a lot of reps. Two sets of 20 on each one. And the other day, uh, do uh, <clears throat> grab a weight and do uh, one good set of 10 to 12 reps. So if your best, uh, if you can dumbbell press 100 pounds for, for five reps, grab the 80s and, uh, or grab the 90s and rep them out and see what you can do for one set on the flat and one set on the incline. So you, hopefully you're ending up with something for about 10 reps. So grab a weight that you feel that you can do for about 10 reps and uh, get on there and grind it out. Now what I want you to do is I want you to bench press like this with your hands this way. And I want you to push hard from the bottom and keep those weights close to you and push with your lats off the bottom and lock those weights out forcefully. That's going to teach you how to use your lats. It's going to teach you uh, how to keep those elbows in proper position. Now remember... We don't want those shoulders up, we want those shoulders down and back. Chest up is a great cue on the bench press. Any sort of pressing that you're doing, chest up is a great cue. That's going to help keep your shoulders back, that's going to help keep your stomach up in the air, help keep your sternum up, and help keep you in proper position. Remember that when you're at the bottom of the bench press. It's going to be crucial to keep that chest up. A lot of people start to do this and they lose their leg positioning. So keep those legs tight, keep the chest upright, keep those shoulders back. <clears throat> um, tricep work is going to be crucial for you as well, so look into doing a lot of that. Um, tape presses can be beneficial where your elbows are out on purpose. JM presses, look them up, do a YouTube search for them, and watch JM himself, JM Blakely, look them up. And watch him do JM presses. When he does a JM press, his elbows are out and his wrists are this way. 
The weights are coming in here. He's driving them up. He's kind of aiming towards the throat. And the, it's kind of hard for me to get the right angle, but he's basically got his hand cocked this way. Cocked. I know, I know. A lot of you guys like that. But the hand is cocked like this. That's a great exercise to do. Rolling tricep extensions can be very beneficial and a lot of lat work. So get on it, get into it, get going on it, and don't forget to add a slingshot to your training. That can help solve the problem uh, pretty quickly because it's going to teach you to help. It's going to teach you to keep your elbows in, but not too much. Make sure you buy a slingshot that fits you properly. Usually, going a little bit bigger in size is the way to go. Um, a slingshot from how much you bench can really help you with your form. It can allow you to handle more weight safely. And that is it from supertraining.tv.